Today's episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With the beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone from adults to teens and even children can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Again, that's csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have conversations about faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller. And this is Mark Hyde. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Sabbath. Like, what is the Sabbath? Should we do it on Saturday or Sunday? And why should Christians even follow the Sabbath? Mark, you ready to go? Let's get rested. Let's Let's go. Fuller. What's up, buddy? Dude, so it blipped a little bit on your intro. It did. Yes, it did. The Skype failed us. It was like, but we got it. We got it. We're there. We're if people there. can't tell by the audio and the video, we, we remote again, baby. We remote. Uh, yes, we are. Now, I will say, for those who are watching on YouTube, they're getting a nice, good close up of our face. So, yeah, finally, you're welcome. right? <laughs> you're welcome. We got that kind of tech, like, uh, uh, what does the Bible say? Where they got like three different camera angles and all Maybe that. Maybe one day we'll get that way. How dope would that be, dude? <laughs> and then pay right? someone to edit the episodes and take um, care of all the things. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, go. we love our we love our CSB sponsorship, but yes, we do. We gonna need some more peoples. A lot more. Oh, so. good. Either way, dude, welcome back, bro. How you feeling this time? Uh, we're doing all right, man. So this is uh, another, what, our fourth remote? Fourth remote. Just because of scheduled conflicts and sickness and everything else that's been going on for us. Yeah, so. we were supposed to be in person today, and then uh, my nanny had to go to a doctor's appointment this morning, and then life just happened. That's, hey, at least we have the ability to do this remote. <laughs> we have technology, dude. It is, I, I am beyond blessed for technology. You know, I was thinking about this so... 2013 or 14, I think, is when our church first started to live stream. And mm. and then we started the podcast two years ago. So that was 2000. Oh, no, no, no. We started live streaming, I think, 2015 or 2016 in church. And we started in 2018. Technology and the availability and the price has been, it's crazy, dude. Yep. Like the fact sure. that you're on a phone with a little vlog rig. And you're able to bring into this, and we connect it to a soft. It's just so cool, dude. It is cool. <laughs> it is super, super cool. Well, dude, so it's been an interesting week for me. I know we're recording on a different day than we normally do. I mean, people who are listening have absolutely no clue, no idea. Um, but we're recording in the morning rather than late, 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 late at night. So we can drink and coffee. And on a Thursday. Yesterday, <laughs> I was at um, the the... Well, it's the same school that my kids go to, but I taught at the junior high and high school chapel. Dude, mm-hmm. that's the first time I taught a junior high or senior higher since in, in, ter- in terms of actually standing up in front of somebody and talking. Yeah, like January of or February of 2020. Wow. So yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, dude. And and some and it was so funny, dude. It's like I know every basic white dude has started a podcast since COVID. I mean, we started before, so let's 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 just be honest here. But oh, gee. they were like, "Dude, you you have a podcast?" I'm like, "Yeah, bro, yeah, we do." Me and Fuller, we pretty tight. So I wore yeah. just to let you know, I wore my RTC swag to speak nice. at chapel. I wore my my little uh blue bright blue sweater with the the quarter patch of RTC. So we nice. represented RTC with a whole bunch of junior hires in high school, bro. So I had to let you know awesome. about that. I had to let you know about that. Cool. Awesome. Anything adventurous or fun happening in your week this week, though, dude? Or has it literally just been chilling at home? Man, I've been just laid up. So this is uh, week three for me of being confined to sitting around, not doing much because of whatever inflammation in my chest is going on. And I 
not allowed to do anything. So, so what do it's you been do? Pretty boring. Like, what do you what? do? I listen to podcasts. I read. I watch TV. P- pretty much, I watch Diners, Drive-ins, and Dies. <laughs> are they still airing that, dude? I don't know if they are, but I've never watched it before, and so now I've been binge watching. Uh, guy, Guy Ferrari, right? Yep, yep, yep. He's pretty, a hoot. pretty awesome. So, uh, it's, man, some good looking food out there. <laughs> so here's the here's the next question: What book have you been reading? Because I know you're a big reader. So recently, I have just been into my commentaries and into my CSB Ancient Faith Study Bible. Oh, really? That's all I've been kind of reading right now. Nothing, no actual book books right now. Um, I did pick up a new book. What was that? About two weeks ago from Half Price Books. And it's basically the, uh, what is it called? It's called The History of the Jewish Religion. And so it starts basically. Oh, that sounds cool. From Moses all the way through the like, Holocaust, like the different views that they've had. And so it's probably about, I don't know, probably about that thick. It's bigger than in my commentary, most of my commentaries. That's unreal. It's a thick book. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to diving into that eventually. I just haven't made it that far yet. <laughs> so I actually just bought a book the other day too. Um, will I read Did it? You? We'll find out. But I bought the digital one just because I tend to have my phone and my iPad on me more than able to actually, because I... I, I've been trying to go through two different books off and on. One's on metaphysics of asking the big universe questions. And I mean, who? I, it's the same book I brought my honeymoon. And Beth was like, who on earth brings a philosophy book to their honeymoon? It's like. Just Mark Hyde. That's just me. Um, and then I also have a Christian worldview handbook that I've been going through. And But, but it's hard to read an actual physical book when you got a bunch of kids. So um, I went digital. This is called Salvation by Allegiance Alone. Rethinking faith works in the gospel of Jesus the King, and we are saved by faith when we oh oh, um, we are saved by faith when we trust that Jesus died for our sins. This is the gospel, or so we are taught. But what is faith, and does this accurately summarize the gospel? Because faith is frequently misunderstood, and the climax of the gospel misidentified. The gospel's full power remains untapped. While offering a fresh proposal of what faith means within a biblical theology of salvation, Matthew Bates presses the church towards a new precision. We are saved solely by allegiance to Christ the King. Oh, 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 towards a new precision, that we are saved solely by allegiance by Christ the King. Instead of faith alone, Christians must speak about salvation by allegiance alone. So I'm curious to dive into this one. I'm curious to dive. This one was recommended. Um, uh, and I can't remember what her name is. Um, she's partnering with uh, Ryan Coatney and Crossform Kids, uh, big-time Christian author. Pris- Priscilla? Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't think what her last name is. I can't. Her, she, her, was from, she was from one of the Kendrick Brothers movies, though. Priscilla oh, really? Yeah, yeah, she's a she, big, big time influencer. So she recommended that on her account. And I'm like, that sounds really dope. So we're going to dive into that one. Yeah, I believe she was on that Kendrick's brother movie, War Room. Oh, really? Yeah. She was like one of the main characters. On I'm, that. I'm trying to see if I can find her social media. And I'm typing it in so bad right now. Felicia, maybe? I don't know. I don't. Either way, it was recommended, and I'm like, let's just pick it up because that looks super cool. So hopefully, we'll have time to read it because you actually read your books. I just buy books and stick them over there. So, <laughs> in fact, well, I have a bunch yeah. of books. Like, remember the books that you looked through? Like, what was that? Like three months ago? Yeah, they're still in the back of my car, waiting to go wow. to half price books to sell them because I just don't go over that side of town anymore. <laughs> wow. Oh goodness. So, Either way, we uh, yeah, we've wasted a lot of time, huh, bro? Let's dive into the would you rather. Oh, are you ready for them? I've got them pulled. All right. I'm ready, my dude. So would you rather be able to survive a fall from any height or be bulletproof? When you say survive, do you mean actually not get hurt uh, or sure, just we'll survive? Because that's so different. We'll, just, we'll go through no, no physical ailments after falling from any height. I think that's what I would pick. Right, so it's either you can fall, but and and not really like you can walk away. So basically, like a uh, Hancock, you can be like Hancock. Yeah, right. Or bulletproof. Um, I I I, I I I choose fall from any height. Yeah, that's what I would choose too. And forty seven percent of people say fall from any height. Fifty three percent say bulletproof. We're in the minority. Well, we also don't live in the heart of a big city. <laughs> that's a lot of true. Too, so. <laughs> That's true. I live in the country now, bro. This is weird. It's nice that I can have burn piles, but I miss city water, bro. I'm not going to lie. 
I'm not going to lie. You're disgusting, man. <laughs> that chlorinated stuff. Uh, all right. Would you rather be a smooth talker or be a good listener? Bro. Bro. I'm already not a good listener, so I probably should choose good listener. I think Beth would appreciate good listener. I put. I would pick. A good, I'd rather be a good listener. Uh, we already are smooth, bro. We are smooth talkers. Fifty-seven <laughs> percent say be a smooth talker. Forty-three percent say yeah. a listener. Oh, we're the minority for both. Again, yeah. Oh, so. oh, look at us going against the flow. All right, bro. All right, you, give me another one. All right. What well, last one? Uh, would you rather have Rambo on your side or have the Terminator on your side? Are you kidding me? That I this might be the hardest would you rather question. I think I'm going to pick Terminator. Now, now, why Terminator? Because look at all the craziness that got sent after Connor, the Connor kid, and the Terminator beat them all. Rambo is like, like he's a machine versus like a non-machine, flesh and blood, like. Terminator gets his arm blown off and he's not going to stop fighting. Rambo gets his arm blown off. He's probably going to be down. But we're talking also Sylvester Sloan. That's true. So I'm going they, Rambo. So I'm going the, Rambo. The, I'm going Rambo. You're going Rambo? I'm going to go Rambo. All right, let's see. So 30% say Rambo. 70% say Terminator. Wow. <laughs> that was actually a hard one. That was, that was actually a, a hard one. Oh, my goodness. That was a good one. Terminator or Rambo. Well, hey, if you guys are new to the podcast, we do this because we want you guys to get to know us a little bit. Because here's the deal. Fuller and I, we've known each other for a long time, right? But it's more fun when you can actually know who you are chatting with in the podcast right. world. Um, and we love hearing from you guys, too. We have no new reviews to read. We read the most recent one last episode. Um, so. Right. I think Apple Podcast is the only place you can leave a review right now. Like Spotify, you could follow. Google Podcasts, you could follow. Facebook, right. I think you can, can't you? Yeah, you can leave. You, you can leave. You can uh, recommend. You can recommend right. on on right. Facebook. Which, by the way, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but Facebook actually like they publish our podcast episodes natively on Facebook now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so nice. every time an episode goes live, it instantly creates a post on Facebook for us. That's just a Facebook algorithm thing that they did. We hooked up our, our Facebook page to the, the podcast feed. So anytime someone listens on Facebook, it counts towards our listening stats too, by the way. So that's, that's just, Sweet. It's, it's, it's really cool. But yeah, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Apple podcast, leave us a review. If you're on Podbean, leave us a review or Hey, Send us an email. We've had a lot of emails from you guys as well. Of just just stories of what you guys are going through and, and how we've been able to just come alongside you guys and, and honestly come along for the ride is, is really how, yeah. how we view it. So and and as go most for it. of our as most of the listeners know that have reached out to us, um, we do our best to respond back as quickly as possible. Sometimes it's a day, sometimes one time it was a month and we did apologize for that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, most of the time we're pretty good about getting back um, pretty quickly. So we try our best. Have, sometimes you have to remind us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes we try our best, but we sometimes yeah, fail. So. We sometimes fail. But hey, before we get oh. into the conversation, oh, what you say? What you say? What copy? Are we That's what I was about to say. <laughs> you were drinking that crap Maxwell's house last episode, bro. I hope Not you stepped it up. Time. Did you step it up? I did. Now I'm drinking a steep and brew Jamaican blend. So this has got the Jamaican Blue Mountain. And it's mixed with some Central America. So typically, I like single origins. Yeah, you are but, a big single origin guy. But this roast is on on point. It's on point. So uh, we had we had real good. Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee with we Joel Demott down and Andy and Andy Layman down in Dudes and Dads. Right. Um, does it have that same taste, or is it a little different? It, it, it has a similar taste, but not as much of a punch. Okay. Yeah, that other so one had a punch. It's good, but it's not like Jamaican Blue Mountain single origin good. Gotcha. But but you also have to think about it's like a quarter of the cost <laughs> of Jamaican Blue Mountain. That's too, true. So. That's true. So so it, it does the trick for the budget. It, it does the trick for the budget. Does the trick for the budget. <laughs> so I have uh, I mentioned this last episode that I was going to do it. So I, I followed through. I'm doing a americano. Right now, because I'm a big Americano drinker. So it's just two shots of espresso, fill the cup the rest of the way up with water, and then a little bit of cream. You know, can I have a little bit of cream? But people make fun of me for this in the coffee world. But my main espresso is the really, 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 really cheap Cafe Bustello. The Ugh. Cuban coffee, bro. It's okay. So I had a buddy of mine who that's was that that's how he made coffee in a coffee pot. Like he actually used Cafe Bustello, and that thing punched you like no one's business. It was strong. 
strong, 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 mm. strong as Rambo. Um, <laughs> but this, it's just, it's yeah. I just did two shots of my arrow press, flipped it over, and then pressed it out. Hot water the rest of the way up. Well, I mean, in proportion, obviously. Um, but it's just, it's smooth. Like there's nothing to complain about. It's not one that's going to win any arrow press award. But it's also just consistent, and I mean, now I have my AeroPress recipe down pretty pretty well for Cafe Bustello, I think. Um, but it's just smooth, bro. Like it's just, it's a smooth hit. It's not like it's not like a strong punchy in the face espresso. It's just, I've had a lot of people who are not big time coffee drinkers like it when I make my lattes with Cafe Bustello because it's just it's it's just a consistent hit. Mm. See, typically so. when I make an espresso, I just drink the espresso. I don't. I don't add nothing. To oh it. no, no, I'm an no American. Cream, no water, none of that stuff. It's just, just no Cafe back. Bustel. Oh, I just shook Bump my whole. Camera. I just shook shook everything. Um, so it's it smells not great when it brews. In all honesty, it just doesn't smell that great, and it doesn't taste great by itself. But once you turn it into an americano, or you slap it in some milk for a latte or cappuccino, it's pretty good. In my opinion, hmm. my opinion, and it's like three bucks for a block, like twelve ounce block. So you can't beat the price either. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing an americano. I get them from Starbucks all the time, and the blonde espresso, and that's pretty good. But this is my cafe Bustella, homie. Wow, there it is. <laughs> that was a lot of that was a lot of nerdy coffee talk, huh? Goodness. Well, hey, should we let the people have a break from our coffee talk and let's get into this conversation? We should probably get into the conversation. Let's do it, my dude. We've, we've already been going for, what, 15 minutes We say now? that every episode, though. We say that every episode where it's like, hey, we probably should get in the conversation. But you know what? We we just be who we be, and we enjoy we the ride. Most of us say we are who we are. No, we be who we be. All, man. We be who we be. All right, dude, set this one up, man. So, you know, there's been a lot of discussion amongst the Christian faith of Sabbath, right? And I know if you're new to the whole church scene, you probably haven't heard this yet. But uh, me, I've heard it a lot. I actually attended a Seventh-day Adventist college, Andrews University in Berrien Springs, Michigan. And it's a a Seventh-day Adventist college. So um, Sabbath talk around there was pretty prevalent of, well, if you don't go to church on the seventh day, as God commanded, then you ain't saved. And Oh, it it was to that extreme? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like you're not getting into heaven because you're not saved because you're not obeying God in one of the basic commandments. Okay. And so it was like, okay. So, uh, you know, I I believe, and we talked about this a little bit before the podcast, but I believe the LDS church um, uh, has a similar view of, you know, a Saturday worship. Okay. Saturday being the seventh day, right? Um, So uh, before we dive into that whole conversation, let's talk about what is the Sabbath. And the first mention of the Sabbath is uh, in Genesis 1, or I'm sorry, Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Um, And it says, uh, so the heavens and the earth and everything in them were complete. On the seventh day, God had completed his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, for on it he rested from all his work of creation. So breaking that verse down. Uh, God created everything in six days. On the seventh day, he rested, and that's the Sabbath. Um, so Sabbath means rest. And, is that rest. what the word means? I know it's like in Jewish, it's uh, Sabbat, right? Like the Shabbat, Sabbath is Shabbat. Shabbat. Shabbat, okay. And so that word literally just means rest. Right. Oh, huh, okay. Yeah, so, um, so we see God doing it, right? God didn't command it in, in Genesis 2. He just said, on this day, he... He rested and he declared it as holy, right? Right. It's and, and, and holy just means set apart. Like it's it's different. Right. It's set apart day. Right. Uh, for he rested on it uh, from all his work of creation. Um, so uh, you know we talk about okay. So we see the seventh day and and when we say Saturday, because to Americans it's well the seventh day that'd be Sunday, right? No, well it's not that way because the first day of the week is actually Sunday. <laughs> and, and in the Jewish culture, it was definitely Sunday. And and what we consider Sunday. And the seventh day was a Saturday, the Sabbath day. So so how does that work like with European culture? Because like, you know, the European calendar, the week starts on Monday. Sunday. Right, right. Well, if you, so like I look at my work and it's weird because 
Um, like at my job, our pay period starts on Sunday, which they consider the first day of the work week. Really? Sunday. Okay. Because like when I was at so, Dairy Queen, it was like Monday was considered the first work day of the work week because a weekend was a weekend, you know? It's, it's just different. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's different all around. But yeah, typically as Americans, we think the first day of the week is Monday because that's our first work day of the week. And you know, our last day is a Sunday, a seventh day of the week. But in Jewish culture, um, the seventh day was a Saturday. First day of the week was it was a Sunday. So life started for the Jew on a Sunday. Correct. Huh. From, yeah, yeah from I just pulled that traditions. up. And it, yeah, it says the week, the, the weekday starts with a Sunday. Right. Yep. So, you know, when, when was this first commanded that you have to keep the Sabbath day? Well, um, it's first commanded in Exodus 28 through 11. Uh, and uh, so this is the Mount Sinai experience where they're getting all the laws. Uh, and this is actually right in the middle of the Ten Commandments, right? This is number four. This is the fourth commandment. Uh, and it says, remember that day to keep it holy. You are to labor six days and do all your work. But the seventh day is a, is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You must not work, do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female servant, your livestock or the resident alien who is with you uh, within your city gates. For the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them in six days. Then he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and declared it holy. So the interesting thing is, is this was commanded to the nation of Israel, right? This is the formation. The Mount Sinai experience was really the big formation of the nation of Israel, not just the 12 tribes that came from um, Jacob, you know, Jacob's right, like whole son. This was literally anyone who was in the Jewish community, right? Right. Is that fair well, to say? Well, it was, it was more than that because there were even some of the Egyptians that, that believed the Israelites, the well, Jewish right, nation, right. That's and, what I mean. and like who, who was in the Jewish community, like whoever right. was in the nation. Right, correct. So this is where, you know, Mount Sinai is typically looked at as the formation of the nation of Israel, right? Yeah. This is where this is where they get their mandate. This is where um, they, they get, get their, their identity, laws, like this their is, identity yeah. right, everything. This is where they're set apart. They are set apart at this moment. Um, so it's, it's just interesting how this command was given um, to the nation of Israel. Now, you know, jumping into the New Testament, right, time of Jesus and on, uh, to the church, because right now, like, you, we're not, you and I are not part of the nation of Israel. We're just, we're not blood, nope. at least I'm not, I'm not Jewish in, in my blood that I know of. Nope. Um, unless you trace me all the way back to Noah. <laughs> <laughs> but But modern Hebrew. But my, yeah, exactly. yeah, Hebrew. Yeah. My, yeah. Modern day Israel. I got, I got no blood. Hebrew blood in me. Yeah. So, uh, so the question that comes up was, you know, well, is this this command was to the nation of Israel? Is this command valid for me? And there's been a lot of debate on it. But uh, what we really need to look at is is let's start where we as a church kind of formulated from, and that would be. Um, Let's look at the life of Jesus, right? We're supposed to be Christ-like and followers of Christ, right? Right, yep. And so um, did Jesus follow the Sabbath? Well, Jesus was a Jewish man. Jesus was in the Jewish culture. So it is assumed that Jesus would follow the Jewish customs, right? So he would keep the Sabbath, a Saturday. Oh, he had to. He was um, a Jew. Like he was a practicing Jew. And if he was sinless, right. then that means he had to keep the law. Right. So it, it, it's it, right, exactly. Now, it's funny because we're going to read a passage here in Matthew chapter 12, and it's also in Mark chapter 2. Um, they're the synoptics of each other. But uh, it's uh, we look at what the Pharisees considered obeying the Sabbath, and we see kind of what Jesus is saying is obeying the Sabbath. Right, so we're looking not – we're not distinguishing which day is correct right now. We're just looking at what the Sabbath is. Just what is. the Sabbath is, yeah. Right, so um, – so Matthew 12, 1 through 14, is kind of a longer passage, but I think it's a very important passage. It says, At the time Jesus passed through the grain fields on the Sabbath, his disciples were hungry and began to pick and eat some of, of the heads of grain. Uh, when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath, right? Because we're supposed to you're supposed to rest on the Sabbath. Not doing any work. Remember, we want to go back to Exodus 20 there and read that. 
and he said to them, haven't you read that what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry, how he entered into the house of God and they ate the bread of the, of the presence, uh, which is not lawful for him to him or for those with him to eat for, but it was only for the priests. So what he's talking about here is in uh, the time of David, when David was fleeing from Saul, King Saul, uh, they were starving and being pursued by Saul. And so they snuck into the temple basically and asked the priest for food to eat this. It's called showbread. Basically is this the showbread, which was only supposed to be eaten at a certain time by the priest. Um, and that was part of the commandments or that was one of the laws back in, um, Deuteronomy, <laughs> excuse me, coffee burp. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, during this time, the priest ended up giving, the priest at the time ended up giving David and his followers the showbread for them to eat, and they ended up fleeing and escaping. So this is what Jesus is referring to. So, uh, during the time, Pharisees and, and those people would have known this story. But that's all what this is referring to at this time. Uh, so, it wasn't uh, for, uh, which is not lawful for him or those with him to eat, but only for the priest. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath day, the priests in the temple violate uh, the, the Sabbath and are innocent? Uh, I tell you something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Moving on from there, he entered the synagogue. There he saw a man who had a shriveled hand and he ordered uh, and in order to accuse him, they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He replied to them, who among you, if he had a sheep that fell into a pit on the Sabbath, wouldn't take hold of it and lift it out? A person is worth far more than a sheep. So it is lawful to do what is good on the Sabbath. Then he told the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched out it out and it was restored as good as the other. But the Pharisee went out and plotted against him how they might kill him. So, this whole story goes to and is talking about during the time of Jesus. Uh, we look at the Pharisees and Sadducees had added extra laws to the Sabbath that were not originally intended. And this is what Jesus is speaking out against. Uh, you know, we'll look at the first part of it where the disciples are, are picking heads of grain. Right. So they're feeding themselves. They're they're doing things to keep themselves alive. Uh and, and the Pharisees speak out against it. And that's an extra law that had come out. Uh, this is what, if you've heard of like the, the Midrash um, and, and different Jewish teachings. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what the other ones are called right now, but I can't think of them. Uh, Midrash is the one that comes to mind. So these are, these are how the priests would look at stuff. Uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, Pharisees and Sadducees would look at laws and they would actually add to the laws to make sure that they did not violate the law. Oh yeah, so, there were safeguards. Like that's that's mainly what it was. It was. I mean, obviously, it's like don't fall off the cliff. So we're going to put up a fence farther away from the cliff, back, so right, you don't exactly. fall off the cliff. Exactly. And so Christ is speaking out against this because they're saying it's not lawful for them to do this, and Christ saying it is lawful. And same with healing on the Sabbath, that was considered work by the Pharisee standards, and Christ is saying. No, it's not work, and I'm going to do it to show you. Um, right, and I, I find it really interesting where it says, if you know what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not condemn the innocent. And then Jesus went out and showed mercy to someone who had a messed up hand. And it was kind of one of right. those things where it's like, if your ox is in a ditch, get it out. Right. And it's like, we have the ability to help people, but you're choosing not to help people in claiming the Sabbath. Exactly, right. Yeah, you're claiming it's work, and so we're not going to help people. And Christ is saying, that's not what the Sabbath was about. Um uh, and it's funny because if we, if you read previous chapter um, in Matthew 11, and this is why I use the Matthew 12 passage because I like Matthew 11. So Matthew's kind of laying it out here. Um, if you take Matthew 11, the end of Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus says before this whole paragraph that we just read, these 14 verses, go back just a couple verses into chapter 11. And it says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me because I am lowly and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he ta he's talking about what? Finding rest in who? 
him. In him, what's, right? What's what's the purpose of the Sabbath? It's to get rest. Rest, right? So, so what he's doing is he's pointing that he, Christ, in himself, is the Sabbath. So, if you come to him with weary and burdened, he's going to give you rest. So the purpose of, you know, if you work six days, you're you're weary, you're tired, you know, you're so you have a day of rest, a Sabbath. And Christ is saying, hey, bring your weariness and burdens to me, and I'm going to give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me because I am lowly and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Rest in who? Rest in Christ. So Christ is kind of alluding previous to this encounter with the Pharisees that he himself is the Sabbath, hmm. that you will find your rest in him. So so let me back this up a little bit. So we we see this idea of rest is introduced in Genesis 1 at creation, or, or Genesis 2, I'm sorry, Genesis 2. I think... I don't know why they didn't put the seventh day in Genesis 1. It doesn't make sense. But, right. you know, we see that Jesus rests, or I'm sorry, that God rested on day seven, and that's what set the precedent for, you know, Shabbat. But it wasn't put into actual Jewish law until who knows? Exodus. Yeah, until who knows how many years later. Um, so, in that meantime, we knew that, or we know that rest is a good thing. And my question is, okay, so why would God have to command a day for rest? Right. You know, like, well, why would that be put in the law? And, and let's look at what else, what did, who I'm trying to think of it was, I'm trying to remember where it's at, and I didn't put it in here, but I should have. Um, but the Sabbath was created for man. Not, not man, man for the for Sabbath. Sabbath. Right, right, and that's it. So Sabbath was made for man to rest. So if if God rested, and then the Sabbath was made to, for lack of a better word, force people to rest. But then right. Jesus is saying, I am the Sabbath. I am that rest. H how do we combine the fact that Sabbath was before Sabbath was actually put into law, and then Jesus now entering the scene? You, you, you know what I'm saying? So, like, again, the so Sabbath was created for man to rest in. Right. right? So, right. so the so the Sabbath, you're supposed to find this rest, this peace, this comfort, this th these times of you getting away from the normal hustle and bustle of, of life. Um, God Himself in, in Genesis one and two, He created the earth and then He He rested, and this was supposed to be the form, the format in which we followed it. And He made Sabbath. God doesn't need to rest, right? He's I, God. Nope. So he created this as a forum for us to look at, to say, hey, if God can rest, then it's okay for me to rest. Right. But what am I to rest in? Am I to rest in traditions and laws? This is where the Pharisees had it wrong. They were resting in these laws and traditions rather than realizing that God had commanded them to rest because they he wanted him them to slow down. What are we supposed to do during the Sabbath? We're supposed to slow down, meditate upon God, and focus on loving God and each other. Right, enjoying each other time with each other. That's why right. it was commanded to the whole, to the whole nation of Israel. And rather than looking at what it was actually created for, the Pharisees had twisted it in such a way that you, know, you had to do these certain things. It was out of tradition. It was out of mandate that we have to follow these certain paths, and they totally lost the essence of what the Sabbath was. And, and I don't know if it was also, I mean, yeah, they lost the essence of what Sabbath was meant to do, but I think it's more the fact of they put Sabbath ahead of other things, like in the same way, like, you know, I think that passage of um, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, that goes back to uh, King Saul with right. the prophet Nathan, where he was like, oh, I didn't know if you were coming, so I'm going to make the sacrifice when I know I wasn't supposed to. And they, uh, and um, Nathan was like, prophet God does, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, and he said, God desires obedience more than he desires sacrifice. God desires right. mercy and not sacrifice. So is part of it also the fact of the Sabbath was put into such high regard that they no longer looked around and, and, and they used, you know, Shabbat as an excuse not to take care of their fellow, fellow members and fellow people kind of like in the same way where um, I, I don't remember what patch of the scripture it was, but they were talking about, um, money set aside and and not honoring your parents and what these religious people would do is if their parents like need help they need this they would say oh I I dedicated all my money to God in the kingdom so I can't really help you mom and dad so sorry it's for God because I'm doing the most important thing and Jesus is like are you kidding me like no honor your father and mother like right. do that 
And that's a way of worshiping God, not just putting all your money into, oh, no, it's all going over here, so I can't help you at all. Like, that's not honoring your parents at all. So is it the right. fact of not just they were doing it wrong, but they honestly had a warped understanding of what we were supposed to do in Sabbath? And part of that is, you know, coming alongside your fellow brethren, you know? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you go back to chapter 12 of Matthew and listen to what the Pharisees are saying and what Christ is saying to them, you can, it definitely hints at that, that they have lost what the Sabbath was supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. They, 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 they'd rather care about, well, you're not supposed to pick food rather than, Hey, they're hungry or, Hey, you're not supposed to heal on the Sabbath rather than, Hey, this, this man lives with a shriveled hand and, right. and there's a miracle that just happened in front of you. And you're more worried about Shabbat being violated than, the fact that Christ just did a miracle right in front or, of your or, eyes. or the guy, the, 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 the lame man who picked up his mat and walked, and they're like, why are you carrying your mat on the Sabbath? Which right. honestly is a fair question. I don't think that's a bad question, but when they heard, no, th I was healed. I don't know what's going on. I was lame. They'd be like, yo, you know, praise Yahweh. That's, I don't think they would say that's dope. I would say that's dope, right. but you know, that's, that's what right. the world's supposed to be about rather than like, um, we're glad you're healed, but sorry, you well, broke the Sabbath. And so, and so Christ is trying to, to reinvent what the Sabbath is supposed to be, one, for caring for others. But he, again, in chapter 11, he's also pointing that he himself is the Sabbath, that you're going to find that perfect the ulti rest. The ultimate rest. The ultimate. In me. Yeah. Right. That he, He's the perfect fulfillment of the Sabbath. Yep. Yeah, I'm tracking. I'm tracking. So, so now let's jump into, like, I mean— when did the early church meet? So post Jesus, all right, we we see that that Christ still abided by the Sabbath, uh, according to Jewish law, because he was a Jewish man. He came to the Jews first, and then sent people out for the Jews first, and then the Gentiles, like Paul. You look at Paul, any of his missions, he went to the temple first, and then he went when they rejected him out of the and then he, uh, the, he, the synagogue. Yeah, he moved on to the Gentiles. Yeah. So that was the mandate. They always went to the Jew first, then to the Gentile, in accordance to Christ's command. So early church, uh, we see two instances. Uh, we don't see any instances where we see that they kept to a strict Sabbath, a Sabbath only, a seventh day Sabbath. Um, but we do see twice now where, that, and if you want to throw in Revelations 1 verse 10, you can throw that in there too, uh, where um, John talks about, on the Lord's Day, he had the visions. So, oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So okay, talk, okay. he calls it the Lord's Day. I'm trying to like, like, where are we going with Revelation? <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm leaving that one out right now. But Acts yeah, yeah, 20, I got you. Acts 20, verse 7 and 8 says, On the first day of the week, we assembled to break bread. Paul spoke to them, and since he was about to depart the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. Uh, there were many lamps in the rooms upstairs where the, uh, we were assembled. So uh, let's talk about the, some of the basic elements that happened in the early church. They would always, they would assemble together in a house. They would break bread together, have a, basically have a meal. Uh, and then, you know, we look at Peter and Paul and they, they would speak to the crowd. These types of things were typical to happen in their assembly together. We also look at where two or three are gathered in my name there. I'm in the midst. This is something that Jesus spoke to us. Um, so there's an assembly coming together on the first day of the week, which as we know by Jewish custom, would be Sunday, or what is deemed later on as the Lord's Day by John and, and Revelation um, chapter 1. Um, Paul also says in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 2, he said, Now about the collection for the saints, do the same as I instructed the Galatian churches. On the first day of the week, each of you is to set something aside and save in keeping with he how he is prospering, so that no collection will need to be made when I come. So What's he talking about here? He's talking about they're assembling on the first day of the week to take up a collection or what we would call a like an tithe. offering. Yeah, they're taking up the offering. So we see they in, in Acts chapter 20 that they assemble together to break bread. And Christ said to do this in remembrance of me anytime you're gathered together. So they, they gather together to uh, in an assembly, as Acts said, uh, to break bread and to listen to Paul speak or what we'd call preaching. Um, and then in first Corinthians, we're talking about taking up a collection or what we'd call an offering on the first day of the week when they were assembled together. So we see, start seeing this pattern here out of these two scriptures where, where they're starting to, we're seeing that they're meeting together. Yeah. There was a change somewhere because I mean, the, 
the Jews that came out of Judaism, they kept meeting in the synagogue until they got kicked out of the synagogue because for them, they were like, the Messiah is here. Our religion hasn't changed. Right. It's just the fulfillment of what we've been waiting for is right. actually here. And so there, you know? there, was a, there was a shift at some point. Now, there's nothing that's like clearly defined why there was a shift from Saturday to Sunday. But here's, here's some of the things that we could talk about because you go, well, God declared the seventh day as a holy day, right? Right. Set apart, a holy day. So is there a holier day? Is Saturday holier than Sunday? Or what they call the Lord's Day, this kind of Sunday, because that's the tradition goes that that's the day Christ rose from the dead on the first day of the week, Sunday, which it was called the Lord's Day. So is there a holier day? Well, Romans 14, 5 through 9, this is Paul again saying, one person judges one day to be more important than another day. Someone else judges every day to be the same. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. Whoever observes the day, observe it for the honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. And whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat it. And he gives thanks to God. For none of us live for himself, and no one dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and returned to life. For this, that he might be Lord over both the dead and the living. Also in Colossians 2, 16 and 17, it says, Therefore, don't let anyone judge you in regard to food or drink or the matter of festival or moon or a Sabbath day. There, these are shadows of what is to come. The substance is Christ. So again, we're pointing towards Christ in these things, and he's the substance for all these things. But both of these verses and these scriptures together say it doesn't matter. The day doesn't matter. It's the fact that you do it. You observe it. You observe the Sabbath. And what's why do we observe the Sabbath? It's not for anything other than resting in Christ. It's us finding our rest in Jesus Christ. If we go back to Matthew chapter 11, and recognizing that he is the true Sabbath, that's why we should take time to set apart, to fully engage and be quiet and stop the hustle and bustle of life, but fully engage into Christ, our true Sabbath. And, uh, you know, I think one passage here that's missing that we, I, I think would be good to bring up is the fact of, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul was a trained Pharisee. Like, right. And, and I don't think we understand what a Pharisee training means today in terms of the amount of work he had to do with the Torah and with the law and the prophets. And, and even, you know, uh, what what passage was that? Was that Romans where he said, um, like, not to brag or nothing, but I was the Pharisee among Pharisees. Like, I had my, you know, T's crossed, I's dotted, ready to roll. And he's the one who wrote these passages where he's like, you know, I was the, like, I was the Pharisee. I understood the law better than anybody. But you know, let each one be convinced in their own mind, which day they're going to set apart as holy, but it doesn't have to be one specific day. Right. I think that that shows a very big transition to what Christianity is about where, you know, and, and again, I don't want to say the Jewish custom was supposed to be this way, but it, what it, it turned into where, you know, Christianity isn't so much about keeping all these laws written down, it's more of why are these laws even here and, and keeping right. the spirit behind the law rather than the letter of the law. And, you know, the spirit of the law for the Sabbath is just rest in God. And what were, what was the Sabbath supposed to show ultimate rest that's found in Jesus. Right. You know? And so I guess here's a question that I have for you. Cause you came out of the seventh day Adventist church and they see Sabbath as a Saturday and we see it as a Sunday is that really that big of a deal that, that we have worship on different days? Well, I, I don't think it's a big deal. No. I, I personally don't think it. And I, and I look at some of the reasoning why we kind of shifted into a, a Lord's Day, uh, especially for Gentiles. Gentiles weren't typically allowed in the inner sanctum of the synagogues. And so that's typically why you see a lot of these guys meeting on Sunday, the Lord's Day. Uh, we can see even like Ignatius of Antioch in AD 110 said, uh, if those who have been brought up in the ancient order of things, i.e. converted Jews, have come to the possession of a new hope, no longer observing the Sabbath, but living in observance of the Lord's Day, on which also our life has sprung up again by him and his death. How shall we, i.e. Gentile converts, be able to live apart from him, even when the prophets themselves 
themselves, also his disciples, waited for him in the spirit as their teacher. And that came from the letter to the Magnesians, uh, number nine. And then we have Justin Martyr, AD 150, he said, And on the day called Sunday, all who live in cities or in the country gather together in one place. Sunday is the day on which we all hold our common assembly, because it is the first day of which God, having wrought a change in the darkness and matter, made the world. So it's the first day of the week. It's the first, day of the week. It's the first time God started creating. Uh, on the same day, Jesus Christ, our Savior, rose from the dead. Again, this is what we talked about, Christ's resurrection, and this is why they call it the Lord's Day. God started creation on the first day of the week, and then Jesus Christ himself rose on the first day and, of the week, right? Yeah. As, as tradition states. Um, I, I love some of the stuff that, like, um, J.K. Beale says, uh, first, the seventh-day commemoration in Genesis 2-3 and Israel's Sabbath ordin ordinance is transferred to the first day of the week because of Christ's resurrection. Second, Israel's way of, of Israel's way of observing the Sabbath with all its detailed requirements falls away, and there is a return to the creation creational mandate. The observance of the mandate is a day of com com uh, com commemoration of God's creative rest, a celebration that Christ has entered that rest. The believers have begun to enter such rest, and a pointing forward to believers completely entering the rest. Third. Christ's coming fulfills Israel's unique Sabbath commandment, since he is Israel's Messiah, accomplishing Israel's end-time exodus and representing true Israel and the end-time temple, which I thought was really cool. So uh, J.K. Beale is saying that uh, Christ came not to abolish but to fulfill the law, and one of the laws he was fulfilling was the fulfillment of the exodus commandments. So the number four commandment, he was fulfilling that in himself. And now looking forward, uh, he is the end time, Israel's true end time temple and uh, end time exodus fulfillment for Israel. So uh, John Calvin also says, uh, when certain days are represented as holy in themselves, when one day is distinguished from another on religious grounds, when holy days are reckoned a part of divine worship, then days are improperly observed. So when we're only doing it for religious reasons, it's improper. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. When we in the present age make a distinction of days, we do not represent them as necessary and thus lay a snare for the conscience. We do not reckon one day to be more holy than another. We do not make days to be the same thing with religion and the worship of God, but merely attend to the preservation of order and harmony. The observation of days among us is free service and a void of all superstitions. So basically, what John Calvin is saying is, it doesn't really matter which day. Uh, we're doing this out of tradition. That's fine. But we got to do it for the right reason. And uh, I think it's important to remember why we do the Sabbath. So why should Christians even keep the Sabbath? Uh, there's a great article, and I put it, uh, the... Uh, the, uh, it'll be in the show notes, basically, the, the URL to get to it. It's uh, from Scott Hubbard of Desiring God. And it says, uh, this is just a, like a little excerpt of what he said. He said, in one sense, uh, no, Christians shouldn't keep the Sabbath. Uh, under the new covenant, no Christian is bound to the fourth commandment as such. We may still decide to rest one day in seven. And indeed, wisdom seems to support the practice of imitating God's own six and one pattern, Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 3, especially in a day when many can work anytime, anywhere, answering emails after dinner, taking calls on the weekend. We may do well even for one day in seven to say, I worked yesterday, I will work tomorrow, but today I rest in worship. In another sense, however, Christians should keep the Sabbath always. And here we do find a connection between the Jewish Sabbath and the Christian Lord's Day. Uh, in the Old Testament, the literal physical rest of the Sabbath pointed to the future rest, but since Christ has brought fulfillment in terms of salvation rest, it is the present enjoyment of this rest that acts as the foretaste of the consummation rest which is to come. In other words, it is the celebration of the Lord's Day of the rest we already have through Christ's resurrection that now anticipates and guarantees the rest that is yet to be. So we are so focused typically on what day we should do, observing the Sabbath here on earth, and what 
Scott Hubbard is saying is, no, we should be looking forward to the rest that we're going to have through eternity, and that rest is found in Jesus Christ from his resurrection. So I guess here's a question that I'm thinking through is, what does rest look like? I mean, obviously we see, you know, rest is actually physically not working. It's actual rest that, that we're supposed to do. Um, but the question that I see is, if, okay, if, if we're supposed to find our Shabbat, our rest, our Sabbath in Christ every single day, what does that actually Pract- like pragmatically mean in terms of what what does it look like to find your rest in Jesus every single day? So I think that's to find your securance of salvation. Okay. To know that I am his and I can rest and not have to worry, am I his, am I not his? And I think this is where um, the Bible teaches our medium is not the correct way to go because you can lose your salvation. So you're in the book, you're out of the book. You're in the book, you're out of the book. You're in the book. And he's like, no, no, no. Your rest is in Christ because Christ rose from the dead. He paid that price for your sins. And if you've accepted that free gift, you can rest in him. No matter what happens in this world, you can rest in the knowledge that no, he is the king. He's defeated death and we will live with him forever one day. And that's the beautiful, perfect rest. And that's why we can look forward to that rest. We're resting it now with the assurance that that's going to happen that we're going to find our eternal rest later on uh, at his second coming. Now, what does that look like for weekly rest? I think it's a phenomenal idea. And if you look at most work cultures, you get days off, right? Mm -hmm. And the day off to be with your family, to kind of just not think about work. There is a mental side of rest that needs to happen there. And we also need to make sure we take time to rest in God through worship, prayer, scripture reading. And this can happen throughout the week. It can happen every day in quiet times. That's a rest. You know, Mark, when you have your quiet time in the morning or at night, I typically do mine at night. I'm resting in Christ and looking at him and worshiping him. You know, it's a it's a form of worship. So quiet times is a way of rest. I think Sunday gatherings is a way of rest. We're, we're blocking out the um, the need and the all, all the distractions around us and really just coming together as a congregation and focusing in on worshiping the Lord and hearing the preaching of his word. Mm-hmm. So I think those are some different practical ways to rest in Christ now, to have that Shabbat, that Sabbath. I don't think it matters which day. You know, I, as I was sitting here listening to you talk about this, and I was just thinking, like, okay, so the Sabbath was put in for Jewish law, and it was a thing to be, um, in my opinion, it's, I don't want to say it's a reward, but it's a gift. Like, like I, I think the Sabbath day was actually supposed to be a gift, not a burden. Um, there, uh, I'll, I'll hit two sides. One is, um, this will be in the show notes too, but the Bible project, they did like a 10 or 12 part series on the Sabbath. I only got through like four or five. Um, but one of the guys was talking about what it was like to actually be a part of a family Shabbat celebration, because if you don't have a place to go, or if you're a foreigner, families welcome people in though. Hey, come celebrate this day with us. And it was a gift to set aside work to be together as a family, to enjoy dinner, enjoy stories, enjoy worship. They were singing all the time. He like he was it was like the greatest thing I've ever got to experience. And obviously the culmination of well, Sabbath starts on the night because the Jewish calendar, which I think is interesting. Sun, uh, sundown to sunrise. Yeah, it's su- yeah, your day starts at sundown. So they actually prepare for their Saturday or their Saturday uh, Shabbat worship at the at the temple tabernacle whatever the night before with their family which I thought was just fascinating um, right. but if Sabbath is supposed to be a gift I kind of view it kind of like as you know in in school when we would get days off or we have Labor Day um, which is I've always found it funny like Labor Day is like the one day where they give you off to not labor but we need a <laughs> massive labor force to take care of those people who get the Labor Day off. Yeah, I've, I've always just found it kind of funny, but, um, you know, we have implemented days of rest in our culture and our society. Like when, even when I was at Dairy Queen, you know, we were not a Christian establishment, but they gave us Easter off every Sunday and we were always off Christmas. We were off, uh, Thanksgiving day. We were off, uh, black Friday as well. So like they were giving us days to be like, you just go enjoy that, man. And, and for those of us who were on salary pay at certain positions, like, I know you think about this that doesn't hurt your pay. That's just, you know, that's PTO for time for you to have rest. It's a gift in the same way that PTO for other employment opportunities is a gift for you to be like, Hey, we're going to let you just have this as a perk. And you know, if we start viewing, maybe we need to start viewing of going to worship on a Sunday as a gift to be like, you know, this is a, a refresh, a reminder, a, a shifting of perspective 
rather mm-hmm. than a, oh, I have to go to church and I have to do this and it's a burden and this, that, and the other. No, it's supposed to be a day of rest and recovery and recoup, whatever way you want to do it. But, you know, Shabbat is all supposed to be focused on what God has done and then what God is going to do. Yeah, right. And we've had many of conversations about the importance of gathering together as church. Yep. And and so this episode is, is another good one. Exactly what you said. It's a gift. It's a gift of rest. It was Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. There's not certain things that we have to do, but we should enjoy the rest that God has given us and the reassurance that God has given us rest for eternity. Mm-hmm. I like it, man. I like it. Wait, well, hey, before we land the plane and give people some fun facts to, to close out this week, is there any, because this is this is all you, homie. I've been learning in this episode. Are there any last things that maybe pop in your mind about Sabbath that you would want people to walk away with? Uh, don't, don't be pressured into thinking that you will lose your salvation or you don't have salvation if you don't worship on the right day. Mm. The important thing is is just to worship. That's the important thing. And not worship because you have to, but because of the blessing that God has given you, the assurance that God has given you. We should be thankful. That's We've had you know, podcasts on thankfulness and how we should be thankful and when we should be thankful and uh, you know how we should worship. We've had those types. What types of way can we worship? We've had all these podcasts, and they all tie together in this culmination of Sabbath. And it's, it's, it's that state of resting. I That's like it, man. I the, the, the one thing that pops up in my head is by just of what you said is, you know, going to church does not actually equate Sabbath. Sabbath is supposed to be a, 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 a state of mind, a day of rest. And, you know, just because someone doesn't go to church on a Sunday either, I don't think means that they can lose their salvation either, right. um, which is, you know, I, I think it's a moral sin to miss mass in, in the Catholic church. And I think you're right. And I, 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 I I'm 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 like 99% positive it is and it's not because again that like man wasn't made to fulfill that it was right. you know it's a gift rest and worship in the church I don't even want to say experience but the gathering of the saints is a gift that we get to partake in and the grace that we receive isn't from any element or communion or what we do in sabbath the grace we receive is just you know following Jesus yeah and and you know what it means to live in reality of that so that, right. that's, that's my last thought, bro. That's the last thought I, I got. Love it. Cool beans. Good Ready job. for some fun facts? Let's do it. Let's do it. Time for fun facts with February. <laughs> there it is. What? What? Do you remember when it. we started that jingle? Like how many year, like episodes ago? Wasn't that at the beginning of season two? Was it season think, two is when we started that jingle? I think so. Yeah, I don't remember. I think so. But either way, dude, take us home with the fun fact for the week. All right. I I may have read this one on accident. I'm sorry. But was it a good one? It's a good one. It's a goodie. (laughs) It's a goodie. It was a good one for me. So, uh, listeners, did you know that Forrest Gump has more CGI or computer graphic images than Jurassic Park? When Forrest ran through the jungle in Vietnam and showed his table tennis skills, that was all CGI. Even the feather at the opening scene is computer generated. Overall, Forrest Gump has more minutes of CGI screen time than Jurassic Park. That was pretty cool. <laughs> like, I was like, wait, what? But but let's talk about that because like I mean, we all know Jurassic Park like had real animatronics. That's what Steven Spielberg wanted. They were robots. Right. But right. the ping pong scene from Forrest like the, I didn't read that part. I just read the headline. But the yeah. ping pong scene from Forrest Gump, that was CGI? Or him just running through the jungle, like with with, with the with the mines like going off on the side of him and all that. Well, yeah, I mean, he ran so many times, but they, they're talking about all the running scenes. I was like, wait, what? But the ping pong thing is like, well, I thought Tom Hanks was just that. I good thought at he was pong. that good at ping pong. I really <laughs> thought that was just Tom Hanks doing his thing. So here's what I'm curious about. You know the movie with Mel Gibson? Uh, we we were soldiers. Yeah. I wonder how much that is CGI'd or actual like other things. Now, now that I'm question. thinking about it, I don't know. I mean. It's amazing what computer and technology can do, Mal, man. Have you actually, yep. before we let the people go, have you seen those really funny videos of watching the Avengers with the green screens? Yes. And them running yes. and jumping and like yep. how stupid it's they crazy. look like in the studio. And then like they add the CGI and you're like, Whoa. what? <laughs> yeah. No, one of these movies cost millions. Oh, goodness. Well, either way, guys, we are so blessed and I don't know, thankful. Is thankful the right word, Fuller? 
I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you guys are with us here week in and week out. We're well into the hundreds, man, and we ain't planning on slowing down yet. So feel free to reach out to us on uh, the website's the easiest place to find all the resources, realtalkchristianpodcast.com. You can find our email address, Facebook, Instagram, phone number. Pretty much that's that's the central hub of where to go to get in touch with us, including the store. You want to send us a message, leave us an, a review on Apple Podcasts, anything you guys can do, we would be just absolute over the moon for you guys to do that for us. Yep. Yeah, and um, oh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else too. I, I, I totally, totally blanked. I don't remember what it was, dude. I don't know what it was. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's a weird day. Nice We're still... Numbers. See everybody next week. <laughs> Should we just end there? Sure. Let's just end there, guys. <laughs> See you next Take time. It Take it easy.